I need you to listen up and I need you to do me a favor and listen to me good. People will pay. You may think what you offer isn't worth the money. You may have reservations about raising your prices. You may have major anxiety about getting started. Hear what I have to say. People will pay or they will find a way to pay for something they need or for something they really want. Full stop. No one has a straight path in life. There are lots of twists and turns, which often leads to growth, understanding, and wisdom, if you know where to look. No Straight Path, hosted by Ashley Menzies Babatunde, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, aims to inspire conversations around the nuanced perspective of success. Because the podcast focuses on the millennial perspective, many guests are mid-journey, which is a refreshing take on perspective in today's podcast continuum. Ashley interviews her guests, capturing a snapshot of the work they've done thus far, while also discussing their hopes and dreams for the future. She'll speak with various guests about their definitions of success and how they overcame failure and life's unanticipated challenges. Listen to No Straight Path, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, wherever you get your podcasts. Do not lose sleep over all the conversations, over plans, over sales meetings, over proposals sent, all of these things, and they end up with a no, a no answer. An endless delay, a question mark, a shoulda, coulda, woulda, but it never happens. Take a breath. Let me make something very clear. We are all in the farming business. Troy, what do you mean by that? What I mean is we are in the business of sowing seeds frequently and often. Continue to sow those seeds to as many people, as many communities, as many companies, with many individuals, decision makers, press, marketers, as you can. Because the more seeds that you sow within time, they will bear fruit. Now, the thing we forget about, as many seeds as we have to sow, some will grow, some will not. Some seeds will grow differently or at a different rate depending on the environment. Are they being watered? Are they being nurtured? And sometimes we have to stop thinking about all the things we need to do and be very clear, I've done the work. So the seeds, if they grow, they grow. If they say yes, they say yes. That's it. I've been talking to my colleague and partner that we've built, No Middle. Uh, you can go see it, nomiddle.com. And we've been saying this thing a lot when we deal with clients and conversations right now. If they want to buy the car, they'll buy the car. And you know what? That sounds very familiar. If we flash back to episode 42, where I talk about hourly rates and pricing, I said something very interesting about Teslas. Roll the clip. People go to a Tesla place and they say, I want to buy that Tesla right there. Okay, is this much money? Uh, they don't come and talk about, can you lower the price? They're going to laugh at you out the dealership. That's the price. The price is the price. Either you got it or you don't. Now what they'll do, they'll leave. If they still really want that Tesla, I'm going to come back, find the money, get a loan to go buy that Tesla. But how silly would it seem to go into a Tesla dealership? They tell you the price of the vehicle and you say, oh no, I can find a car better for cheaper. Okay, you do that. But guess what? It won't be a Tesla. It won't have the emblem. It won't have the swagger or the status quo that comes with the car. The price is the price. You evaluate how much your cost is. You add your margin on top of that. And sometimes you got to stop looking at what all the competitors are. If what you do and what you offer is in high demand and that value is justified for the price and you can wait to someone who sees that price and says yes, then all you got to do is keep selling seeds. So the more you have out, the better your chances are to reap these opportunities. 
What's up, digital world? You're listening to the I Digress audio experience with Troy Sanders. Social media, marketing, storytelling, business, culture, and more. Coming to you in three, two, one. I've said this a lot, and I'll say it again because repetition is key for people to stay on top of mind and actually believe it. Patience, poise, and persistence are essential for growth to happen consistently and effectively. I'll say that again. Patience, poise, and persistence are essential for growth to happen consistently and effectively. So here's a few questions for you to kind of know where you are. Do you know what you have is valuable? Are you convicted in the price associated with your deliverable? Do you know who your ideal audience and consumer is? Has your deliverable been tested and proven to work? Is your messaging regarding the problem that you solve crystal clear? Is what you saw for in high demand? And lastly, do you have the capacity to maintain high growth? Now, if you have answers to all of these things and those answers suffice for you, then you're in a good spot. You just need to continue to be patient in the process, in your messaging and the work while having poise and maintaining your persistence, and continue to keep sowing. Keep sowing, keep growing, keep showing, keep glowing, keep growing. You get the point. Keep sowing them seeds, and they will manifest in due time. If you do not get weary, do not faint, and continue onward. Agency Accelerated, the show for agencies who want to grow and scale. I'm Mike Alton. Head of Strategic Partnerships at Agorpo on August 25th, you've got the opportunity to attend Agency Summit and learn how to scale your marketing agency to new heights. You learn how to implement systems and processes that can be delegated, gain back precious hours from every day, and craft an achievable vision for the future of your agency, and so much more. From the dozens of amazing speakers and sessions we've got lined up to the panels, breakouts, and networking opportunities, we also have a few surprises in store for you. In fact, until this moment, one of our keynote presenters has been a closely guarded state secret. COVID-19 sure created some constraints, didn't it? We've been constrained to our desks, our homes, our families, Zoom calls. For some, all these constraints severely affected our businesses. For others, the constraints became their fuel for growth. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that constraints breed creativity. Wouldn't you like to be able to strategically decide limitations to impose that would actually spark your business? Well, that's exactly what our opening keynote speaker at Agency Summit is going to help us understand, and prepare a mindset for an entire day of learning and exploration. You ready to meet him? Andrew Davis is a best-selling author and internationally acclaimed keynote speaker. Before building and selling a thriving digital marketing agency, Andrew produced for NBC's Today Show, worked for the Muppets in New York, and wrote for Charles Corral. He's appeared in the New York Times, Forbes, the Wall Street Journal, and on NBC and the BBC. Davis has crafted documentary films and award-winning content for tiny startups and Fortune 500 brands recognized as one of the industry's jaw-dropping marketing speakers andrew is a mainstay on global marketing influencer lists wherever he goes andrew davis puts his infectious enthusiasm and magnetic speaking style to good use teaching business leaders how to grow their businesses transform their cities and leave their legacy and he's here with us today hey andrew it is such a pleasure to see and speak with you and mike that was awesome man i'm so excited about this summit it's gonna be amazing like i looked at the agenda you got robert rose you got uh, alex dumas you got sarah scott brooke sellers chris giles you got brian kramer you got rachel matisse you got stephanie Liu, who i know you know very well it's gonna be an amazing event it is gonna be amazing andrew at agency summit you're gonna be delivering the opening keynote address titled the cube of creativity Why by adding constraints sparks innovation, action, and builds businesses, which we will talk about. But first, I need to know, how did you go from Muppets to marketing? There's one thing I learned working at the Jim Henson Company with the Muppets. And the truth is, they create great content, for sure. But that content doesn't make much money. Like, the truth is, Sesame Street doesn't make any money, really. The movies like Muppets from Space and Elmo and Grouchland, those movies don't make a ton of money. What really makes money is all the merchandising and licensing they do for the characters that they've created. And what I learned at the Jim Henson Company, if you can create content that inspires people to go on a journey they never expected, you can sell them whatever it is at the end of that rainbow. 
they will buy anything from you. I mean, no one needs a, you know, a Big Bird plush doll until you fall in love with Big Bird <laughs> and now you need to buy one, right? You can go to gorepulse.com forward slash summit if you haven't yet RSVP'd. Make sure you do that. When I first used social media, I thought there was so much power in posting and getting a ton of impressions. I'd see those impressions go up and think, ooh, like I'm looking at like I'm seeing million dollars going up in my currency, my bank. I'm getting excited. That ego trip is real, y'all. Maybe you get that silly ego trip too. But the real power is when you can post something and get direct messages saying they are ready to do business with you, or they are ready to refer business to you, or they're ready to feature you on a podcast or a live stream or a show or an article to amplify your name, your product, your message, your brand, your deliverable, your entire business infrastructure to your industry, to a whole boardroom, to various audiences just waiting to buy what you offer. And what does that suggest? To me, that suggests the real magic happens behind the scenes. I had just had a great moment with Neil Schaefer. Neil Schaefer is one of those people who, when social media really took off, he was one of those pioneers and leaders. He's a maestro of social media marketing. He creates dialogue and has written four books to really help and support a lot of individuals. I appreciate his message and I appreciate his time. He was just in Chicago and I just like, I have to get down there. So I went down to the Red Walk, which I haven't been in a little while. And I sat with him. We, we had a fun time. A lot of different folk came and we talked about different things. And I was sharing with him about how you have to understand that social media is not the destination. It is a utility. It is a bridge. And for those who don't know, one of my biggest quotes that originally was a big tweet that became the nucleus of my book, Strategies Up, goes a little something like this. Imagination is the engine. Content is the fuel. Social media is the highway. Marketing is the roadmap. Sales is the destination. And the last thing was culture is the GPS. And so I always focus on social media is the highway and sales is the destination. And to get to the destination on the highway, you need content as a fuel. Now, to create that content as fuel, you need imagination to generate everything. And you need to have marketing to help you navigate. And then on top of that, culture is a GPS to bring it all together to get you to where you need to be from point A to point B. But many folk fail on the aspect of making social media the highway to something and they make it the destination and that's it. How many of y'all have had over 50,000 followers on Facebook, but they don't have an email list? I'm speaking to myself too, y'all, because I don't have an email list. But if y'all would love to join my email list, let me know. I'll create one for y'all to join. <laughs> but I digress. My point in saying that is you have all these followers on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or the Gram or YouTube subscribers, whatever the case might be, whatever platform makes sense for you, and let it shut down. You no longer have access to send a message to those people who have probably been consuming your content for years. So you've made social media the destination versus a bridge to something you own, to something you control, to something that if all the platforms shut down, you still have this ecosystem that you can find a way to have a conversation with if you needed to. Now, many people have experienced that when Facebook went down, they had the Facebook groups, they had the big Facebook profiles, it didn't matter if it had a blue check or not, it was all shut down. It was not just Facebook either. It was Facebook, it was Instagram, and all such things. I repeat, social media is not the destination. As much as we want to showcase our best selves on various platforms, the game is about converting content into cash. Now, whatever hill you want to die on regarding the process and roles of marketing, of sales, of branding, and who was responsible for what is an endless blind game. Matter of fact, check out episode 54, where I break down the blame game, marketing versus sales, which is really responsible for growth. But again, I digress. The metrics are indicators that you are moving in the right direction or the wrong direction. But you don't stop and say just because your metrics are good that you reached your destination. What do you do? When you come up to a blind spot, do you speed up? Do you close your eyes and hope for the best? Of course you don't. You want to know why? Because you can't see what's beyond. It's very imperative that you see the full picture. Moving forward in business is kind of the same thing. When you want to make big bets on how to connect with your customers, you need the full picture. The full vision 
needs to be in view. The HubSpot CRM platform gives your marketing, success, and sales teams a full 360 view of your customer. The payments feature lets your teams leverage payments data for targeted email campaigns and automate workflows when your customer pays, meaning your business keeps running smoothly and your teams can continue crafting customer first experiences. And we all know the detriment of what happens if you don't have the full picture of your customer in view. Things crash. Things don't go the way that they were supposed to go. And you lose ground. You lose momentum. But to maintain that momentum, use the HubSpot CRM platform to help you provide the insights of your customer for your entire team to perform its best work. Because you have the full view of your customer insight at all times. Learn more about how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. Too many stop at quantifying social media efforts. Too many stop at quantifying results from social media at the metric level of likes, follows, engagement, impressions, mentions, shares, views. And to be honest, that's an indicator light of something's going right in the consumption of your content. But that doesn't necessarily mean those who are consuming your content are the same ones who will be buying your service, buying your product, buying your deliverable as a result of that consumption. You get me? The reality is we need to increase the quantitative value of revenue generated from the cumulative efforts of all of it. This is what needs to be achieved and proven. I'm not here to help you grow your vanity metrics so you can have this false sense of increased worth and value because of that dopamine hit you get with each new like and each new impression. Shoot, maybe even each new visitor comes to your site and it just stops. Those are indicators that we're moving in the right direction. It's kind of like if you're trying to lose weight and yeah, you focus on the scale and we all know it fluctuates up and down, up and down, up and down, but that's one big indicator of you're getting to your goal. But other things that goes beyond the scale, how do you feel in the morning? How much energy do you have when you do a light jog or run? Do you find yourself out of breath in two minutes versus like 10 minutes? You know, all these other indicators just telling you you're moving in the right direction. But again, the destination may be you want to drop 50 pounds. But as you're doing that, how does everything else feel within your body? And then obviously when you look at the scale and you're saying that, yeah, we're doing all these great things, but I'm not losing that number. And then you transcribe that into business and how you look at social media. You might be of 10x your followers within like six months, but let's also put some common sense behind it and say, well, you 10x your followers, but your followers are at zero. So it wasn't that hard to 10x it. Now, if you're at like 10,000 followers when you 10x it again, that's a little bit harder. But I digress. What I'm trying to get at and what I'm trying to break down and what I'm trying to express and emphasize over and over and over again, that social media is a utility and a contributing piece to finishing the puzzle, but it isn't the only one you need if you want to scale. Do you have a solid growth engine that is comprised of a content engine and a marketing engine, a branding engine and a sales engine? Troy, what do you mean by that? I mean, do you have systems in place that can run as an automatic streamlined process that when you need to push content, marketing, sales, and branding, it runs on your behalf based off your guidelines, based off the coordinates and adjustments you have seen that has worked well with your consumer base, who you're trying to attract, who you're trying to disqualify, and you're driving a uniform, consistent orchestra, if you will, of output that sounds like you, that looks like you, that feels like you, and it transfers this high level of energy, of confidence, of conviction, of positivity, of yes, I can, and yes, I choose you, to the end user. And after all of that, you're hearing cha-ching, 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 money hitting your account. Here, there, they're buying the product, they're buying the service, they've subscribed, they're doing what you wanted them to do, that's helping you becoming more financially stable, and from there, you can scale. Social is a key point in the driver, but it is not the destination. That's what I need you all to understand. 
That's what I need you all to get in your heads. And I don't want no one to fail when applying social media principles. Social is only one part of the puzzle. It requires so much more. I'll be real honest with you. I've spent the last 18 months on self-development to maximize my growth. And I mean, hyper-focused growth. Sure, what did you do? Well, I'm glad you asked, subconsciously to myself. What I've done is a few things. I've done a lot of studying and consumption to really grasp sociology and psychology. But on top of that, I wanted to improve my writing skills. I wanted to go beyond that and understand how do I simplify my messaging, but making it more impactful, making it more powerful, making it more clear and concrete and to the point. And so that requires me to not only process copywriting, but look at how do I structure my sentences and emphasize certain words and even in my speech. And that requires me to really grasp around demand gen, risk tolerance, sales enablement, behavior science. And then even if I get to all of that and it's starting to work really well, it doesn't mean anything to an extent if I don't close the deal. And so I need to get better at negotiation tactics, right? So that way we got that complete circle. But even after all of that, I still need to combine the copywriting, the psychology and the sociology, the behavior science, the sales enablement, the risk tolerance, the demand gen, coupled with the negotiation tactics with a way to get them in the first place. That's where outbound marketing comes in. And so all these things I spent all this time reading and studying and trying things out and failing on my face to make all of this work. 18 months, full commitment. I'm a big fan of repetition. If you took all of my episodes to this point and stacked them up, you would find straight lines from episode one cutting all the way through to this episode. Because in the root of all of it, you have to echo certain formalities, certain structure points, certain emphasis in order for it to consistently be in your top of mind and execute effectively. According to HubSpot, email nets $42 in sales for every dollar spent netting an eye-watering 4,200%. So I don't know about you, but I think as marketers, we need to prioritize email marketing. Thankfully, that's where the Guru Conference comes into play. The Guru Conference is the largest online email marketing conference in the world. The brainchild of Jay Schwedelson of SubjectLine.com has put together a 100% free virtual conference designed to share the very latest digital trends, email best practices, and emerging tools you'll need to step up your email marketing performance today. November 2nd to November 3rd, you will learn everything you need to do to enter a marketer and come out a guru. One final nugget I want to leave in this moment with you. Damon John will be the keynote speaker for Guru Conference 2022. Click on the link to register. Tell your friends to register. Tell your marketing colleagues to register. Get your whole team to register for this amazing good time. And I will see you there. You know, we can't be timid about our greatness. We can't assume people know what we do or what we have achieved just because we posted on social media a few times. What needs to be on top of mind for most is simply knowing what you do, how you do, why you do it all throughout. What is something they can easily identify with you? What is something they can be surprised by you? And what is something that is unique to you? Those three questions alone push through the content wall on that. We're juggling this thing, as I've been saying, my, my least generated blueprint, educate and entertain to enchant. That's really what we're doing on social media. That's really what we're doing with our content engines and our website and our videos and all the output that you put out there and distribute on the daily for people to either identify you're in a certain field, to follow and subscribe, to fill out a form, to have a conversation or to convert. And it all starts there with your content. But we have to learn how to position our content to get people through a funnel. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by sales funnels because they feel it's so spammy and it's a lot of work and effort and it's just heavy. You know, funnels don't have to be very long. A funnel is really, and let's say we just throw away the funnel. Maybe you don't like dark tunnels. <laughs> let's just throw away the funnel. And let's just call it a bridge. There's three sections of the bridge. Let's get more people in section one of the bridge, then the middle of the bridge, then to the end of the bridge, right? 
Think about this. When we have this bridge, a bridge has only so much capacity of weight it can hold. And so you having people interested coming in and you're either disqualifying people or they've disqualified themselves and they're leaving. And so if we add this framework on top of maybe an email marketing campaign, how many people do you have in your email list, if you even have an email list, that aren't active anymore? That's just sitting on your bridge, taking up space, taking up weight, that if you removed it, that would create so much space and alleviate so much pressure off the bridge to be more efficient. And you could focus on the people coming through. So scrub the list. If they haven't been active, if they haven't Open up the email. If they haven't given you an answer to proposal in X amount of days, why are you still holding on hope? We need to stop being hoarders when it comes to the growth of our business. Being a lean machine is better than anything versus being a hoarder creates borders and you'll never grow to where you want to be or get to the destination you want to get to because you're carrying too much weight that's unnecessary. We have to find the balance. And if you don't want to create a funnel, create a bridge. It's very open. It's very transparent. You can see every point of it on the bridge. Bridge is a simple thing. It doesn't sound intimidating. So let's just focus on building the right bridge. And if social media is the highway, that driver and the content is the fuel to keep them going and sales is on the other side of the bridge is that destination. Our job is to consistently drive people through the bridge to the finish line and allow people to leave or we disqualify them while they're on their bridge to get them off the bridge so we can keep the lanes open. So we don't have traffic jams and we can keep things moving. Now, I don't know about you. That sounded pretty good. I think that was a good analogy. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. But this is what I need you to understand. This is what I need you to comprehend. This is what I need you to practice over and over and over again. That bridge requires you to have a solidified social media highway, good content that drives them, a process that can identify quickly and effectively who is and who isn't willing to buy, and you releasing them from thing on your bridge. So you can effectively have good conversations, close more deals, and have less bloat in all of your processes. Because I'm sure there's a ton of things you've been prioritizing that is not going to move the needle. There's a ton of things you're doing, staying busy, that is not moving the needle. Stop praising being busy. If you're a person who just is stuck on being busy, listen to episode 23, where I really call you out on your busyness. Let's switch to being more productive. Go to episode 60, how to master your craft in just 10,000 hours. Again, emphasizing less on being busy and being more productive. Lastly, episode 59, how we think determines our success. How to master being agile like water to think, act, and grow. Good episodes, episode 23, episode 59, episode 60, to help you really look at your bridge differently so you can approach your content differently to really make social media work for you differently so we can see a difference in those growth goals of sales in the destination. Please listen to past episodes. Please do the work. Please look at your business a little bit differently. Apply these tips, apply these tactics accordingly and go get that M-O-N-E-Y so you can create the life that you want to live through your business. That seems like a perfect spot to end this episode. T out. And that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Digress. What was your takeaway? Care to share your thoughts and tag Troy on social media? You can find him on all platforms at Find Troy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review or comment for this episode from wherever you're listening. Looking for a marketing strategist to build the structure, strategies, and systems you need to get the success you want and the ROI you desire in your business? Book a discovery call to talk with Troy at findtroy.com. And as Troy's philosophy goes, imagination is the engine, content is the fuel, social media is the highway, marketing is the roadmap, sales is the destination, culture is the GPS. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 